Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing great today. Uh, so today's video is going to be a short tutorial on how to shoot long exposure minimalist seascape photography. A really long name. Long exposure minimalist seascape photography. A really long name, hopefully a shorter video. So let's jump into it. All right, let's start by talking briefly about equipment. What do you need to shoot your long exposure photography? Just a couple of items. You're going to need a tripod, of course. You're going to need any kind of camera that can shoot in bulb mode. And then you're going to need some kind of shutter release. Any type is fine. And then the only other item that you're going to need is ND filters. I do have a video that goes in detail about all the different types of ND filters uh, that I'm going to link up here and in the description below. Uh, but today I brought my really cheap uh, screw-in ND filters from Kenko. This one is a 10-stop filter and this one is a 4-stop filter. I'm probably going to end up using both of those uh, stacked up together because today is quite bright. So that's it for equipment. Let's jump into my finder view and talk about composition. So uh, when we talk about composition uh, with minimalist photography, uh, there are many things to consider, but the first one is, of course, no one likes an uneven horizon line. So if I put this and I make it straight, you can definitely see that the composition here improves. Uh, then, when we talk about composition, uh, we kind of need to look at the scene and decide what's important and what's not. In this particular scene, what's important is the movement of the water. Uh, and this sky up here. As you can see, the sky, while I was talking with you, got pretty interesting. Uh, the sand here, not so interesting. We have footsteps, uh, we have any kind of, uh, you know, dirt, dust. So yeah, I want to reduce my scene as much as I can. And there are many ways to do that. One of the ways that I like to do use is to just zoom in a little bit. Right now I'm at 24 millimeters. And then I kind of want to give more importance to the sky rather than to the beach, because the beach is quite dirty. So I'm just gonna move up roughly like that and try to make a composition when I have the first third of the image is a little bit of sand and a little bit of water. Then I have water up to almost the half of the frame and then I have most of my frame, which is a really interesting sky. And of course, with the long exposures, these clouds here are going to move. So the effect is going to be really nice. All right, so back at the back of my camera here, I hope you can see my screen, it's pretty bright. Uh, so I made sure that my horizon is level, as you can see. And I do have a lot of sky here in the top. My my sea here and my little bit of beach here. I want to make sure that I focus uh, as much as possible to infinity and then I'm gonna lock the focus to manual and I'm also gonna make sure that everything is actually in focus by zooming in a little bit and this might be quite difficult to see but where you see the red lines here is where um, the image is actually in focus. So next thing, as you can see here, um, when I was shooting video, my f-stop was quite low. But for, of course, for long exposure, I want to drag my shutter as long as possible. So I'm gonna raise my f-stop up to about um, f11. So that's gonna give me uh, 100, uh, one over 250 of a second. And then I'm gonna make sure that my ISO uh, is as low as possible. I usually prefer to use my native settings, which is in the D850 is ISO 64. I also have my white balance locked down to daylight. And of course I'm shooting in RAW. Uh, in my case, the final image is going to be a square. So what I want to do is go into my settings here and I want to change my ratio to one to one. So I do get my square here and I can check a little bit better how the final image will actually look like. So right now, as you can see here, I'm at shutter priority mode, 
which gives me a rough idea uh, of the exposure of the scene. Uh, and another way that I can have an idea of the exposure is by checking the histogram. So if I check uh, here on my histogram, you can see that the histogram is perfectly in the middle. And one thing that I like to do with long exposure is actually uh, expose this image uh, to the right. So one way you can do that with any camera when you're in shutter priority mode is by holding on on the exposure compensation uh, button and then dial in and raise your exposure until the top part of the histogram, the rightmost part of the histogram, starts touching the right part of the histogram. Of course, if you go too far, you can see here the histogram is going to be cut, so your image is going to be overexposed. So I just want to go up just about when the histogram starts to get cut without getting cut, so something like this. And by doing this, I can see here that at F11 ISO 64, uh, with these settings in shutter priority mode without any filters, uh, my camera thinks that the correct exposure is uh, 1 over 160 of a second. So that's my base exposure. Uh, I can try and take a simple image of this, like this. And then, as I can see here, the highlights here, since the sun came out while I was shooting the image, are kind of already a little bit too bright. And I can check the histogram a little bit better here. And as you can see, it is slightly too bright, probably. So I'm just going to dial down one third of a step on my exposure compensation and take another test shot. Check that out. And as you can see here, there is a slight uh, overexposed warning here in the sky, just in a really small area here. But I think uh, with this camera, this is good enough of a setting to, uh, to actually make it work anyway. So then, now I have my base exposure, which is 1 over 160 of a second. And then the next thing that I want to do is I want to put my ND filters on. All right, so I do have my ND filters in front of the camera. Uh, I switch to manual mode. And now I have to calculate the correct exposure time after putting the ND filters on to get an image properly exposed. So I'm using this really simple app that basically just calculates uh, the correct exposure time. You just have to put in uh, your base exposure time. So. 160 of a second and then you have to put in uh, how many stops of uh, ND you're actually using so in this case I'm using 14 there you go uh, so the, the app tells me that with uh, a base exposure of 1 over 160 of a second and 14 stops my exposure time is about 1 minute 42 seconds so roughly about two minutes uh, so that's what I'm gonna do all right so now that I have my exposure time I do have my camera in bulb mode I do get my remote here and I'm gonna set that up uh, along the exposure of roughly about two minutes uh, with this kind of long exposure since the sky changes a lot uh, and usually you're not completely exposed to the right. Uh, I try to get a little bit more time than what the app is saying. So if the app is saying 1 minute 42 seconds, I usually just round that up to 2 minutes. So in this case, I'm shooting a 2 minute exposure. And yeah, everything is set up, camera in manual mode. Uh, the scene didn't change. Oddly, I have a boat just in the frame, but you know. Maybe I'll Photoshop that up. So yeah, I'm just gonna start. Make sure that I don't touch the camera during these two minutes. And that's gonna be it.
Alright, this is how I shoot my long exposure minimalist seascape photography. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel, and as usual, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.